Today's presentation, Developing an EcoMap. Hello, my name is Eileen McKenna, and I'm the Family Liaison for the Connecticut Birth to Three system. I'm here today to talk to you about creating a family EcoMap for your Birth to Three IFSP that you're doing with families. An EcoMap is a way for families to help us identify all the formal and informal supports in their lives. Informal supports could be their friends, their family. Informal supports could be their child care provider, the nurse at their doctor's office. Creating a family eco-map in Birth to Three allows us to begin to build rapport with families. It also helps us draw shy families out of their shell and let us know all the people in their lives that can help them, support them as they begin their time in Birth to Three. I'm here today with Sherry. Sherry? Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, my son Matthew was in birth to three. He got in about um, two years, four months. So we were kind of late to birth to three, unfortunately, but we had an amazing experience. That's great. So, you know, today we're going to go and do an eco map of your family as it was when Matthew was two years old. So um, we're going to begin with the circle that's right in the middle of the paper. And in the circle, which is kind of like the sun in the middle of the solar system, um, we put who's living with you right now in your house? Okay. Who's in here? Um, my husband. And his name Scott. is? Scott. Scott. And of course, myself and my daughter. And what's your daughter's name, Sherry? Chelsea. Pretty name. Thank you. And Matthew. Matthew. So Matthew, I know, is two. How old is Chelsea? She's seven. And you and Scott. Any dogs, any cats, anybody in there that... that we have a do uh, dog. His name is Orion. Orion. Great. So now we're going to make like almost like a spoke from the sun outwards. We're looking for other people in your life, people that are both supportive and then maybe people that you are with on a regular basis that maybe aren't quite so supportive but we're really looking for all the people that interact with you in your life so we usually begin with grandparents are there good solid grandparents yeah um my mother okay and what's her name ruth ruth so you can see i'm doing ruth's name and then i'm doing mg just so that i remember that's your the maternal grandmother of Matthew. Um, who else? Roland. Roland. Is that your dad? Yeah. And are Ruth and Roland, are your mom and dad a good source of support for you? Mm hmm And about how often do you talk with them? Um, I would say three times a week each. Yeah. So they're by telephone, in person? Uh, yeah. I would say um, maybe once a week in person. So I don't know if you noticed, but as, as you told me those things, I kept adding another line, which is showing that that's a pretty strong connection. It's yeah. a good connection. How about paternal grandparents? Um, we probably talk to them a couple times a week. Uh -huh. It's uh, Vinny and Karen. Good support. Um, yeah, uh, they they. I feel like they think that it's my parenting that's uh -huh. at issue. So I noticed that you kind of moved your hand in sort of a waving motion, and there's really you know there's no right or way wrong way to do this eco map. It's just sort of for you and I to look at these supports. So that little wavy line that I just put in there kind of shows that there's support there, but sometimes the support isn't all that it should be, maybe. Right. How about siblings, aunts, uncles, yeah. other family people that yeah. are? Yeah. Uh, my sister. What's her name? Stephanie. And um, she lives in California, but she's huge. I talk to her all the time. This line, you can see I'm making a thick line. Um, I could put down, how about how often do you talk to her? Sometimes when I do these things, I'll put down, you know, frequency, but 
I'm doing thick lines now because I'm using <laughs> the Sharpie. I would say, say three times a week on average. Yes, and good, good support. Yes, yes, very good. She even read a book. You know, she definitely, you know, trying to be helpful. Um, how about other family members? Um, my, I have a brother in uh, Massachusetts. What's his name? Rob and his family. And they're pretty good. And his wife? What's, uh, what's her name? Mary Claire. They have small children, too. So and, the, and the kids. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to do like a little circle around them with the kids. Yeah. I feel like it's hard because, you know, when you have children of your own and you have, um, if your child is not acting the way you expect them to, that it makes it uncomfortable for other people. And that's a big problem for us is, you know, the way that our son behaves at family gatherings, uh -huh. it makes it difficult for other people. And therefore, it definitely colors how we spend time together. And are all of those, the kids in your brother's family typically developing? Yeah. So that might yeah. be hard for the comparison between yeah. Yeah. what's going on in your house mm -hmm. and what's going on with his kids. So not quite as thick, you can see, as your sister's line. Right. How about other family people that are important? Any great grandparents, um, any aunts, uncles, any other people that you can think of? I, um, another brother in He's good, too, but he's a bachelor. Yeah, doesn't quite get it. No, no, <laughs> no, not What's at all. What's his name? Sean. How often do you talk to Sean? Um, wow, probably three times a week. Wow. Yeah. We didn't ask about Rob and Mary Claire. How often do you talk to them? Um, maybe not as much. We, we, we plan to get together, but we don't talk regularly. Yeah. Um, any other family people that you can think of? Um, my, my husband's oh, sisters. Husband's sisters. He has uh, three sisters. So I'm trying to circle of three spokes. Our solar system is getting bigger and bigger. I might need a bigger piece of paper. <laughs> what are their names? Uh, Karen, uh, Lori, Lori, and Helen. Nieces, nephews in this group? Um, husbands yep, that you want to add? There are husbands. There's Tim with Karen. There's Stephen with Lori. And um, Peter with Helen. And how about little nieces and nephews? Um, yeah, Karen and Tim have a daughter, Jessica. And Stephen and Lori have um, Nikki and Kayla. And are these children, like Rob and Mary Claire's, around the same age as yep. uh, yep. Matthew? Yeah. I didn't get Nikki's sibling's name. Um, Kayla. Kayla. And Helen. we see them, we see them, no kids for Helen. Okay. Um, we see them on family occasions. And they're good with Matthew, but we don't see them very much. Okay. Anybody else you want to add, family-wise? No, that's it. How about friends? Um, not not really. You know, unfortunately, the you know having Matthew because he is difficult to go places mm -hmm. with. Um, we you know, and people are. I feel like some people are uncomfortable. It's definitely strained friendships. So I don't really feel like there's anything to put there. How about professionals in your life that are that are solid that you can count on. You know, sometimes I use the example of, you know, the nurse that sits at the desk in the doctor's office that you call when your kid hits his head and you don't know if it's enough to go to the emergency room. Actually, since I just got connected with Birth to Three, they made a recommendation for a new doctor mm -hmm. because I didn't really have that. And the new doctor is very good, but I, I've just met them. Well, let's put him down, pushing him a little out of your your inner circle and pushing him a little bit out here because the potential is there that that could be a really strong connection. Yeah. What's his name? Dr. Magner. It's a her. Her name. 
And are there office people there? Yeah. Um, Penny. Penny. Anybody else? Um, well, there's a whole practice of doctors. Yeah. And, and they're all yeah. potentially good. Yes. Yeah. How about work friends, colleagues, Scott's friends, colleagues, neighborhood people, faith-based community? Uh, we just started trying to go to church. Okay. And um, there's some women in church that have um, been trying because we couldn't put them in the nursery, uh -huh. so we couldn't stay for church. Mm -hmm. And so they've offered to personally take him and be with him so that we could be in church. That's nice. Yeah. Do you want to put, how about if we put, should we put church ladies in yeah, there? <laughs> okay. Work friends? No. No, I'm, I'm, I'm at home right now. Scott's work friends? Um, it's more, uh, it's more separate. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not the kind of people that would. You would call. Right. In no. the middle of the night. No. To come in and babysit. No. Um, what about fr old friends? Um, I, yeah, but again, they're kind of scattered around the country, mm -hmm. and I think that um, they can't relate. Okay. You know, um, the times that I brought it up, especially one of my friends has a very small boy, and um, I think that my son makes her nervous, so she's kind of protective. So, Sherry... When you look at this, you can really see that there are a lot of people in your life. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I love about an eco map is that it's kind of a living and breathing document. It can change. People can come into your life. Um, people can move away and maybe move further out in the spokes. But it's, it's really a way for you to look around on this one piece of paper and see you have a team. You have a, a, Ma a team Matthew that's all, all there for you and your family.